Hello and welcome, welcome back to Space Engineers on the Xbox on the Series X. And we are on the beta, which is version 1.196.1, 1 uh, same as the main game. The beta, though, does a few things differently. The beta allows for a few little extra options specifically in edit settings advanced the block limit with this radio button deselected you have no block limit on your console for space engineers whatsoever you can go past the 200,000 PCU on the regular Xbox or the 500,000 PCU on the retail version of Space Engineers on the Series X, not the S. The S doesn't have that functionality, I'm afraid. Only the X does. And also, you can take advantage of 1 million PCU base. If I turn block limits on, you'll see that the PCU set to a million rather than the 500,000 of the retail. But if we turn off the block limit, then we can paste in grids until we crack over around around 2 million 350 to 2 million um, 500,000 PCU depending on the um, survival map or the map that you spawn these things in on. Uh, basically, it's a lot of PCU to play with, specifically if you're playing solo. So, that is one of the major differences between the beta and the retail version of Space Engineers. If you look down on the rest of the settings, they are pretty much the same as before the main reason that we originally had the beta and demo was that so keen could put things like mods and other features first to test them out and then port them across to the retail however apart from the no block limit there's no difference between this version and your retail version eventually keen are going to port the settings from this across into the retail. Until then, though, the only way to get the no block limits is to download and run the beta. The beta will also pick up all of your DLCs and everything will be fine. If you want to use mods, it picks up all of your mods as well that you have subscribed to. There you'll see on the left hand side all the mods I have subscribed are all there. And the mods I have activated are on the right hand side. Why are we in the beta though? Well, I wanted to use this particular point in the beta as part of this little tutorial. A few people have asked me now, both on, uh, both privately and on the group, and uh, even a couple of people I know who watch this who are friends of mine, how you find ore in Space Engineers when you're not on the Earth-like planet. So if we move out of my basis safe zone here, into Pertum itself. You'll notice that I am on quite a rocky promontory. What you need to do then to find ore on a place like Pertum, you can do two things. First of all, if you've got the materials you can build yourself a little station 
say, on the edge of this ground here. If we pop out the build menu and we just throw some blocks down, we just need a few blocks to support our little station here. You can build this onto your base if you already have an antenna, but if you've got the components and you're already sort of established, you can build an antenna and you can build ball detector and you'll need some way of powering it. Now my advice is just build a battery and if you want power to this constantly well you could put a wind turbine on top of it. It's only a temporary structure and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the on this hello what's going on here the beta is of course as I said the only place you can do the no block Turn it on that's interesting why isn't it doing that I'm just going to delete that and try it again. Beta does have some issues. Ah, intriguing. It's not linked the grid up. That's one of the issues with the beta. There we go. So let's try this again, shall we? Let's pull these blocks. Let's just pull them all the way back instead. And we'll pop the battery back on. When you're on Pertum as well, you've got to be careful if you're playing in survival mode with weather enabled because Pertum is a hostile and very dangerous place. Lightning, there we go, can strike your buildings and your vehicles and it will wreck things. All right, we're going to turn the broadcast radius on the antenna up and we're going to turn the broadcast radius range of the ore detector up and immediately you can see that we've detected iron and ice around the base now these have come from when meteors were enabled but it gives you an idea apart from this and this is what i wanted to talk about when you're prospecting for ore in space engineers on earth like it's easier to see, but when you were on Pertum in a density area like this, it's a lot easier to see. And what you're looking for are patches of ground like this. And this is why you can build a little ore detector base like this. Like I said, you could slap on a wind turbine, but really you could basically slap some thrusters and the control seat and take this whole thing mobile. It doesn't have to look pretty as long as it can do its job. The other thing you'll need in your inventory, I haven't got any because I'm playing in creative, are hydrogen bottles. Because if you're going to be flying around with the suit, you want at least three of those to give you enough time to locate the ore. So let's look, because we're on the Series X consoles, we've also got a really decent view of the landscape around us. So what we're looking for are patches of grey, light grey against the sand. Well, if we pop open our drill and come close to something like this, you'll see there's iron. Like so. And if we take a little trip over here, there's cobbles. Oh, ho, ho. 
and silicon. Now, cobalt is what you're going to be looking for if you're going to do any <clears throat> kind of vehicles involving thrusters. Cobalt's going to give you access to metal grids, and it's going to let you build those lovely, lovely atmospheric thrusters. Patches like this can also contain um, ice. It's a, often an indicator that somewhere around you might find ice. Obviously, these are craters from the meteorites. Meteors. But if we go up into the air again, and you want to go like this if you're prospecting until you're about this high and then you can look like i said there's that patch we found before but over here there's a suspicious looking patch this direction so you can orientate yourself like this then press a and you can look down on the ground as you're going and there we go there's some interesting things and if you want to come down and examine it just push the stick forward carefully and you can approach the ground you can see there's iron on this one so far there's the other patch that we're looking at earlier there's more iron here so we've got a great source of iron close to base we've actually got quite a lot close to base including cobble silver from the meteorite go up in the air again look around say so patches of grey head out over here you could probably just see or not see depending on how well you spotted it but there's another patch of potential ore here oh, that's silicon there may be more ore in the zone as well than just the silicon and so on one of the reasons i suggest making a prospecting vehicle is because the hand drill doesn't have a great range for ore but your vehicle can have a large grid ore detector which has a much bigger range because some of this ore is deep like you might land on a patch like this and run around and you've no idea what's there If you have a prospecting vehicle, you can just land, turn on your ore detector, and bang. range you can now see we've got silver but it's below the hand drills detection you can also see that 160 odd meters away we've got some iron because our antenna boosts the range of our ore detector so you can imagine if you've got something like this with some atmospheric thrusters on and you wouldn't need very many um if you want to balance them out probably four for lift uh on a planet like person you don't even need uh downward thrusters so you could ignore those then just a couple forward a couple backwards one left one right or maybe two left two right and then you can make a little prospecting vehicle 
and you could just literally take off like I'm doing, conserving your suit's jetpack fuel, and just skip along the landscape looking, flying low and slow. And then when you find things like that, the actual vessel will detect it. What happens when you find things like this, though? Well, I haven't shown you. I've shown other videos how to do this, but I'll repeat it on this one. When you've got your cobalt, press your invention button, tap the left trigger to GPS, and just press X, which will create a new GPS from your current position. Then you can just go across here using the left stick and name it. Ooh, I hear a storm rolling in. Then, if you hold down both bumpers, you can see you've got your marker for your cobble. Sounds like an electrical storm. Could be a dust storm. And if there's some lightning. If you're inside your safe zone, you're perfectly safe. If you're in a vehicle and you're outside your safe zone, uh, you're going to get struck by lightning. And if you're on foot outside your safe zone, there's, there's, there's a good chance that lightning will hit you. It can't harm me because I'm in creative, but it will do damage to vehicles and everything else if you're uh, not careful. But yeah, that is your basic 101 on the beta at the moment, which is not much different to good old regular space engineers, barring the no block limits. There you go, I just got struck by um, lightning. Let's just remove this weather for the time being. And everything else is the same. Hopefully, as I said, Keen will um, give us no block limits on the retail so we don't have to worry about the, the beta at all. Because performance-wise, the retail does actually perform a little bit better than the beta because it's more optimised these days. Apart from that, though, you can uh, play around on it. It also supports blueprints. However, you have got all your blueprints here. That you're subscribed to. Place them in. As I said, if you turn off the no block limits, you don't have to worry. You can keep on pasting until your console falls to the dashboard screaming and complaining that you've put too much or too many PCU grids at once and things will start to slow down eventually even on the Series X I, like I said I've got mine to about two and a half million PCU now before it screams to the dashboard and makes a horrible grinding sound with the game Your mileage may vary. Anyway, there you are. That's your quick guide on finding ore on Pertum as well as a look at the beta. Hopefully, it's going to be of some use to anyone who wants to play on Pertum and uh, experience a higher gravity planet with less resources and a harder style gameplay. It's much harder than Earth-like because trying to find ice on Pertum is very tricky. Yes, you might see some ice here and there, but that ice is from the random strikes when I had those enabled. I will be back with another video. There will be mod showcases and the rest. I've got a few uh, mods that I want to look at. Uh, I'm specifically going to have a 
quick look at a rather neat mod by SE Modder 4 that uh, will be great for anyone who wants to make their builds look as though they're transferring power from one place to another. I'll give you a quick look at this, but I'll go into a little bit more depth on a small mod showcase of it. But these power lines here are pretty great for connecting grids up that you want to make look cool and look as though they're actually drawing power from one place to the next. See the lights on and I actually have power lines running to my little tower from the base rather than using just great big blocks. It's just a little cosmetic thing and uh, you can do some fun stuff with it. Also, it makes some great greebling for the outside of ships. Anyway, I'll talk more about that on its own dedicated mod showcase. Until then, stay safe, have fun, take care, enjoy the game. Keep on watching Keen's news for Grid AI. Uh, it's going to be epic. Bye for now.